Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we will learn how to build a simple to-do application from scratch using React.js as front-end, .NET Core Web API as back-end, and Microsoft SQL Server as the database. Here is a demo of the web application. We will first install all the prerequisites. Then we will create the database and objects required for our app. Next, we will create the backend project using .NET Core Web API. And finally, we will start creating the React.js project. Let us now install Node.js. First, let us download the installer file. Let's install. Let's verify the installation by checking the node and npm version. We have successfully installed Node.js. Let's install SQL Server Management Studio which we will be using to create database objects in SQL Server. SSMS is installed successfully. Let's install Visual Studio which we will be using to develop the app which is needed for this project. We will be installing the community version which is free for learning purposes. Let us run the installer file. Let me choose ASP.NET and .NET Desktop Development. Let me put a shortcut in the desktop. We can skip the sign in and choose a theme. Visual Studio is now ready to be used. Let's install Visual Studio code. I have a Windows 64-bit system, so we'll download accordingly. Let's install it. Visual Studio Code is now installed successfully. 
Let us now set up an SQL Server database using Azure. Let's log in to Azure Portal. Please note that you need to have a valid subscription to create resources in Azure. Now let's create the SQL database. Let's create a new resource group. Next, we need to enter the database and server names. Next, we need to add credentials for login. Let's choose development version as it costs less. And also reduce the data max size. Let's choose public endpoint since I do not have any private network. And let's keep others as default. The database server is now ready. We can use it in our app with the help of connection strings. Let's connect to the database using the SQL Server Management Studio. Looks like we need to provide access to our IP address. Let's add it in the Azure portal.
Now let's connect. Let's add the table required for our app to store the notes details. It will have two fields. One is an auto-generated ID and another one to store the notes description. Let's add some records into it. Our database table is now ready to be used. Let's start creating the API project. Open Visual Studio. Let's choose ASP.NET Core Web API. We don't need HTTPS. Now we need to add a couple of changes to the project. Open program.cs file. We need to add JSON serializer as default. So let's install Newtonsoft JSON package. Looks like the latest version is not compatible. Let's use the older version. Now let's configure this in program.cs file. Next, we need to enable cores so that we can consume the services from the front-end project. Generally, this is not recommended in production. You should only whitelist the servers accordingly. Now let's add a controller to add our API methods.
We need to first add SQL Server Connection Settings in App Setting JSON file. Let's get the SQL Connection Strings from Azure Portal. Now let's write the method to get all the notes data. Let's write the select query to get the data. We need to get the connection details. We can make use of dependency injection to access connection details. Let's complete our get notes method. Once data is available in data table, we will return this as JSON result. Let's test if this works. We see that it works. Now let's complete the add and delete notes methods as well.
Let's test if they work as expected. We see that we are able to add new notes. Let's check the delete method. Delete method also works. Our API project is now ready. Let's create the React.js project. Just open up the command prompt and type the command npx create react app and the name of our project. Let's open the project in Visual Studio Code. Let's simply run the project and see how it looks. We see a default template. Let's remove all this and put a simple header tag. Upon saving, the page refreshes automatically. Let us now add the HTML and the methods required for our app. We need to make few modifications to the app.js file. We need to modify it as a component so that we can add the methods. Let us now add the constructor for this class. Superprops will basically help initialize the parent constructor as well. In the state, we can include the variables to be accessed in HTML. We just need one array variable to display the notes. Let's create a variable to store the API URL. Next, let us write method to get data from the API into the notes array. We will use the fetch method to call the API to get notes data. Once the response is received, we will update the notes array variable by setting the state. We have a lifecycle method call component did mount which will execute once page is loaded. We will be calling the refresh notes method here. Let's use the notes variable to display results in HTML. 
we need to first declare the state variables in render method. Now let's display the data in HTML. Let's check if this works. We see that the data is displayed as expected. Now let's add the text box and button to add new notes. Let's also add a button to delete a particular note. We need to pass the ID of the note to be deleted. Now let's complete the method to add notes. Let's first capture the input data from text box. Next, we need to create the form data to send to the post API method. Once done, we will alert the message and also refresh the notes array. Similarly, let's implement the delete method. We need to pass the ID to be deleted. We will be passing it as a query string. Now let's check if everything works as expected. Let's try to add new notes. It works as expected. Let's try deleting it. The delete also works as expected. Our to-do app is now completed.